Hi, and welcome back to this series on markups, markdowns, and break-even analysis. Um, as always, you can pause the video, go back over it if you don't understand something, either from the textbook or from the video. Um, and if you can't uh, get a grasp on it, feel free to you know call an instructor, either telephone or via email, to help you out understanding it. Okay. Um, in the last video, we had left off um, talking about the percentage markup on cost. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the selling price. Now, remember, you're going to be just given information. Okay. Um, we've be in in these videos, we've become accustomed to the fact that $100 was our selling price, our cost was 60, and our markup was 40. Okay. Um, but you know we're not always presented information in the way we want it. Right? What if we know our cost is 60 and our percent markup on cost is 66.6 percent? Okay. Notice I that's all the information I'm given, and I'm being told well, what do I want for a selling price? Okay. This situation happens an awful lot. Um, let's take for example the hospitality industry. Uh, restaurants, you know, they uh, their markup is basically, you know, generally between 25 and 30 percent on their food cost. Um, when you go into the restaurant and you see a plate of food for 19.95, generally that markup on the food itself is 25 percent. Okay, well, you know, with this example, you know, well, what was my cost? See, it all depends upon what you're looking for and the information you're given. But let's keep that on the side for the moment. Um, uh, we're gonna, you know, the calculating the cost um, will be for the next slide. Um, but when we're calculating the selling price, you know, if we had, say, lobster, okay, the at certain times of year lobster is very expensive and at other times of year it's very cheap. You know, it all depends upon when they harvest the lobsters. Um, you know, this the restaurant could just you know, sell the uh, plate of lobster, say, at forty nine ninety five, and never ch change the price. But as the price, as the cost of the lobster goes up and down during the year, you know, there's going to be a fluctuation in their gross profit at certain times of year when lobster is abundant, right? Um, the price goes down, right? And they make a lot of money. But when the lobsters, you know, can't be found, and it's hard to get, the price goes up, and they're making a lot less money, right? Um, so why would I want to even, you know, carry lobster at that time? So a better idea is to just say, okay, look, we want to maintain a specific margin, right? We need, we know we have to maintain a 25 to 30 percent margin, uh, so that whatever remember, margin is selling price less cost gives us our gross profit or our gross margin. Um, we want to maintain that 25-30%. From that, we can uh, pay all of our fixed expenses, our selling and advertising, utilities, and all that other kind of stuff. Okay, so they kind of like say, okay, here's my sale price. You know, this is my cost that gives me more margin. Well, I want to always maintain a 25-30% margin. So um, let, let me write that down, and so that you can maybe have a little bit better understanding. Selling price okay and then I have my cost which gives me my gross margin all right and again you know we, we talk about this here these are all quantities these are dollar amounts but we also talk about percentages you know our selling price is a hundred percent my cost is sixty percent that means my gross margin percent is forty percent Okay, my selling price is hundred dollars. My cost is sixty. My gross margin is forty. Same as the uh, pizza pie in the last e example. That relationship between quantities or dollars and percentages is is still there. So if I have this lobster, and lobster is cheap, and I want to maintain the uh, twenty-five thirty percent. My question is, is how much is my selling price going to be? And when lobster is very expensive and I want to maintain my 25, 30 percent, 
my question is is how much is my selling price going to be you know the price of lobster can change from day to day to day especially when it's you know uh, abundant all right the price drops rapidly from week to week okay um, if not daily so uh, that's just that's an example a real world example of you know calculating the selling price so we had started out with our simple example in dollar amounts of 100 to 60 plus 40 and from the previous uh, video, we had calculated our percent markup on cost was 66.6%. Now remember, that 66.6% was calculated by taking um, the uh, $40 markup over my $60 cost to give me 66.6%. But in that in order to get that markup I was already given my markup and I was given my cost so I could easily calculate my selling price but that's if I'm given that information if I'm not given the information like in the case of the lobster I need it you know I just know that I wanna maintain a certain percentage okay and that cost is going to fluctuate day to day which then changes my selling price day to day right? So, in this case here, my cost is $60, and I'm going to multiply it times 1 plus my percent markup on cost of 66.6%. So that's 60 times 1.666. Um, just a quick little bit of math, 66.6%. If I divide by 100, I'm sorry, 100, that'll give me 0.666. Or I could take the 66.6% and just move the decimal place over two places to give me 0.666. Okay. So 60% times 1.666, if I punch it up on a calculator, times 1.666 is equal to my selling price is equal to, in this case here, it was 99.96 or $100. Okay, so I just, that's an issue of calculator rounding. If I kept on going out more places, I would get exactly 100. Right? So just be aware of the calculator rounding there. Um, so, knowing that my, my cost is 60, and then also knowing that my percent markup on cost is 66.6, .6, I would be able to calculate out my selling price of 100. And I can prove that out and end up with a, mar uh, a markup of 40. Right? So now you're starting to see how all of this relates, and it's just a matter of how you're viewing it. Okay. Um, you know, you do you need to know this formula? You know, you know, memorize the formula, but don't memorize it verbatim. Understand it. Okay. If I have a cost of, let me change the pen color here. Uh, ink color. Let's change it to blue. If I have a cost of sixty dollars, okay, and I want to mark it up sixty-six percent, right? you can't just multiply by 0.666 right? you want you want to multiply it by oops you multiply it by 1 plus the 666 this 1 represents the $60 if i take 60 times 0.666 you know then i'm going to get my markup of $40 60 times 0.666 gives me you know thirty nine ninety six forty dollars okay that isn't right that isn't my sales price my we know my sales price is sixty plus forty right to get a hundred so I need to understand that this one represents my initial cost if I take sixty times one right sixty times point six 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 Okay, 
then I end up with the right relationship. In other words, I've taken the 60 plus 66 percent more of it, the 60 plus the additional 40 by utilizing the one in the formula. So yeah, I have to, you know, I memorize the formula and yes, I'll use it on the test, but when I'm thinking about it, if I know my cost is 60 and I know I want to mark it up by 40 percent, uh, 50%, 66 percent, right? Um, that's not. That's going to tell me the percentages a portion of the 60. My 60 becomes like the 10 slices in the pizza pie, okay? And I don't want that. I want to know the 60, the the six slices plus the four slices. Well, how do I get that additional four slices? Well, it's one plus, you know, my 60 plus to get to the hundred. Right, um, and you can only do that by multiplying by 1.666. Okay, all right. I hope you understood that. Um, if not, again, you can back up the uh, uh, video, go back and and view it again. Um, all right. You need to know the formula, and remember, we were given cost and percent markup here. We weren't given dollar markup and we weren't given our selling price. But based upon that, those pieces of information, we were able to calculate our selling price. So calculate the selling price right, based upon this cost and the percent markup on cost. Right, now let's look at it from a different perspective. Let's calculate the cost. Here we have this percentage and we have this cost. We're able to calculate the selling price. Now <clears throat> we want to calculate the cost. <clears throat> In the cost, we know we have this. We still have the same percent markup of 66.6 percent. .6%, that markup on cost. But instead of having the cost, this time we have the selling price of $100. And we want to figure out the cost. Compare it to the other formula. Here we still have the 66, but we knew the cost and we wanted to find out the selling price. We do that multiplying. Here, percent markup, we know the selling price, we want to figure out the cost. And notice that we're dividing here. Okay, so let's do the math. We know the 100 is our selling price. Okay, and again, 1 plus the markup. 66.6% and that is 1.666 right so when we take 100 in our calculator and divide it by 1.666 we end up with our cost of $60 we knew our selling price is 100 we were given this percentage we're able to calculate our cost of 60 and then we can work back and figure out that our margin is 40, two out of three. And again, if we were given the dollar markup 40 to begin with, okay, which allowed us to figure out the percent mar margin on cost, right, we wouldn't have needed to use this formula, right, because we were given the dollar markup. But we, that isn't the case. The case is we we're told our selling price is 100 and our percent markup is 66.6 .6, and that allows us to calculate out the cost. Plug it in and figure out the markup itself. Okay, So yes, here's another formula just like this one back here. You need to know that formula. You need to know this formula also. but. One of the things that, you know, let me jump back to that idea of the portion base and rate. If you went, you know, here you have two different formulas and now you want, you, you should have a better understanding of the relationship between those two different formulas. But if you're sitting there, you're trying to deal with this, you know, converting those relationships into portion base and rate, you're just complicating the issue. Okay, you're making it, you know, you, it's like adding all of these extra steps that you don't need. So, for that reason, I don't like portion base and rate and you notice I'm not using it here I don't care what the portion base and rate is what I care about is understanding this 
relate you know these relationships okay I have a hundred dollars as my selling price right I know that that's the most I'm gonna have so my cost and my markup have to be two numbers less than a hundred if I end up with you know if I take a hundred and I divide it by 0 0.666 right a hundred and I divide it by 66.6 percent .6 or 0.666 right I end up with a number of like 150 <laughs> well how could my cost be 150 when my selling price is only 100 I'm, I'm selling at a loss that doesn't make any sense so if that happens to you you know just remember that like back here I was taking 60 times 60 plus the 66 and notice I'm in order to take, get that extra amount I have to multiply well that's that multiplication gives me more in this case here whoops back up here sorry no let me find out where I'm at jumped around sorry okay sorry about that um, over here you know in the previous in the previous slide multiplying by the percentage gave me more than the 60 okay that gave me the hundred over here oops, over here I'm dividing okay and by dividing that gives me a number less right? if I multiplied trying to do what I did before I would have the wrong number Okay, because I wasn't base. I'm sorry, by dividing and not considering the one, all right, being uh, the 100, I end up with 150, which is the wrong number. So, um, understand the relationships here. Understand the formula, and then remembering the formula will be easier. Okay, I have a selling price. Okay, I need less than that, so I'm going to divide. And in order, if I divide just by that percentage. I'm going to end up with a, a bigger number, but if I divide by one, which is the hundred plus that percentage, that allows me to, you know, have a lower number, which would be sixty, which would be my actual cost, and it makes more sense. Okay. All right. I hope you understood that, and that'll be it for uh, this particular um, slide. Um, we're going to next. That was covering markup based upon cost. You know, markup based upon selling price in our next video is pretty much uh, the same. We've laid a lot of the foundation, so I won't be going over as much of that you know theory and idea and understanding um, as I did in these last uh, few videos. So I'll see you in the next video.